everyone in the previous class we learnt about the application of stereographic projection method with reference to the failure of the side walls of the underground excavation. Let us continue with the same discussion and then try to see that how using the two methods we can determine the uh, size and the shape of the failure wedge that is being formed in the uh, side wall of an excavation. So, uh, this uh, uh, we learnt in the previous class that uh, to find the shape of the wedge in the tunnel side wall, uh, it is necessary for us to determine the shape of the intersection figure which is projected onto a vertical plane. Now, this intersection figure was obtained by the rotation of the uh, great circle intersections uh, through 90 degree about the tunnel axis and for your ready reference this was the figure that we got and we saw that how we can get this uh, in the previous class. So, here you need to keep that in mind that in this method 1 we are considering a vertical plane which is parallel to the tunnel side wall. So, uh, you see that whatever were the traces a b prime let us say and if I join it through the center I get this line then a c prime this line and b c prime is this line and when we construct this view there you can see that this a b prime is parallel to here this a b prime and a c prime is here and b c prime is parallel to this particular line. So, this is how we generated uh, this view. So, in this case uh, the view of the joint traces uh, in the northern side wall uh, seen from the inside of the tunnel or in the southern side wall which is seen from the outside of the tunnel uh, will be the same. We look uh, at the direction of 340 degrees. Why 340 degrees? Because the tunnel axis is 250 degree, 70 degree and we are considering the axis perpendicular to the tunnel axis and hence if you add 90 degree to 250 degree it works out to be 340 degree. Now, uh, this line of intersections a b prime, b c prime and a c primes uh, they are also parallel to the lines from the center of the vertical projection to the points a b prime, b c prime and a c prime respectively. Take a look here as I explained you earlier as well. See this is the intersection point a b prime and if I take or if I join this by the center, so you see this is parallel to this particular line here. Similarly, this is A C prime and I join this and this is parallel to this A C prime and if I join here, this is what is B C prime. So, this is the line parallel to this. So, uh, as I mentioned that uh, these views uh, they represent the joint traces which are seen in northern side wall from inside of the tunnel or the southern side wall from outside of the tunnel if we look towards the angle 340 degree which is represented by this section x x and this is what is the direction. Now, this can also be checked by comparing the angles alpha, beta and zeta of these traces of these planes a, b and c in the vertical side wall. We can compare these from the stereographic projections as well. So, take a look here when we refer to the stereographic projection then see here alpha is the angle shown here. So, the 
strike of this a prime great circle that is making an angle with the tunnel axis. Similarly, beta is with reference to the great circle B prime and xi is the angle with reference to the great circle C prime. Now, if we consider the mirror image of uh, this figure. So, that will represent the joint traces in the southern side wall which is seen from the inside of the tunnel or in the northern side wall seen from the outside of the tunnel and you need to look in a direction 160 degrees. So, that is how the mirror image is going to be. Then uh, it is extremely important for us to completely understand these views to avoid any error in the incorrect assessment of the stability and in the application of the incorrect remedial measures. So, uh, you see that depending upon the size of the wedges that are being formed that are likely to you know slide uh, in the excavation from the side wall of the excavation the stability analysis of that underground excavation will be carried out. Now, if we do not understand these views completely or if we make any mistake in uh, making these stereographic plots, then the stability analysis will not be accurate. This will lead to the incorrect stability analysis and based upon that incorrect stability analysis, you will never be able to get the proper support measures which are to be installed for the stability of uh, that tunnel. So, it is extremely important for us to understand these views completely. Now, how to determine the height of the wedge? So, what we do is we take the section xx through the apex of the wedge and we find the apparent dips kappa and theta of the planes A prime and B prime. So, uh, right now this is a view uh, as far as the stereographic plot is concerned. Let us take uh, the view that how it will look in the vertical projection. So, uh, you see here that this is what is the angle kappa and angle theta. And uh, we have discussed these things in detail that in case of roof, how do we determine uh, these uh, uh, height of the wedge or the uh, area of the base of the wedge that can be accommodated uh, in the uh, roof. So, we have to follow the same procedure to get the similar uh, aspects here with reference to the side wall failures. Now, this we learnt earlier also that uh, in the case of uh, the side wall uh, failure, uh, falls are not possible and uh, all the side wall failures will involve the sliding on a plane or along the line of intersection of two planes. And we saw that there were two methods. So, first method we discussed uh, in which we were taking the projection on a vertical plane which was parallel to the side wall. Now, let us take a look that what is the second method and how we can get the uh, dimension of the wedge, height of the wedge, its base dimension to get its uh, volume. So, in this case uh, traces A, B and C of the joints in the side wall of the tunnel, these are found by determining their apparent dips which are represented by alpha, beta and xi uh, for the planes A, B and C respectively in a vertical plane that is parallel to tunnel axis. So, here this is what is a difference that we will consider the vertical plane which is parallel to the tunnel axis. Take a look here that how this looks like. So, we have the great circle A, great circle B and great circle C which represent the three discontinuity which will form the wedge in the side wall causing the 
side wall failure. So, here uh, in the similar way as we have been doing earlier you see the intersection of these great circles A and B this is the point that is represented by AB this is BC this is represented here and AC is here we join it with uh, the center and that is how we get the traces. So, we come to this uh, view which is the vertical projection which is uh, the vertical plane parallel to the tunnel axis. So, here uh, you see that we get A prime, B prime and C prime and see how these lines are parallel to the strike of these uh, great circles and according to that we draw the lines parallel to AB, AC and BC to the corresponding lines here in the stereographic projection. Now, the appearance of the traces AB, BC and AC in the side wall is established by finding their dips psi a B T then psi B C T and psi A C T of the projections of these lines of intersection on to the vertical side wall and use this expression that is tan of psi A B T that is equal to tan of psi A B by cos of theta A B. Now, first let us try to understand what are these angles. So, this theta a b is the angle between the tunnel axis and the projection of the line of intersection a b on the horizontal plane and psi a b is the true dip of the line of intersection a b. Let us take a look that how uh, this uh, appears in uh, the stereographic projection. Okay. So, uh, you see that uh, this is the intersection line or the trace and the projection of this on the horizontal plane. Okay? So, we are considering a plane that is vertical to the tunnel axis, okay? vertical plane parallel to the tunnel axis. So, you see that its projection is going to be this angle and that is what I am calling as theta a b. Similarly, here you have this line as a c and when I project it on this, so this angle is going to be theta a c. In the similar manner, here we have b c, this is the point and you take its projection. So, this is what is going to be theta b c. So, according to this stereographic projection, once I draw the discontinuity in terms of their respective great circles, we can always find out all these uh, angles. So, theta a b is known, theta a c and theta b c is now known to me. Now, this psi a b is the true dip of the angle of intersection a b. Now, how can we determine this? So, take a look here this is a b. So, what we do is in this direction only I measure that how many number of divisions are there. So, directly from there I can determine psi a b and similarly I can get psi b c and also psi a c see here this is a c and in this line along this line only I count the number of uh, you know division. So, when you have the proper stereo plot here so that way the complete hemisphere is uh, uh, divided into some vertical and the horizontal great circles. So, from there you will be able to obtain this psi a c and similarly here you can see that this is what is b c trace and uh, if we measure in this direction then we can find out the true dip of the line of intersection B C. 
Uh, so, similar way we can find out uh, psi BCT and psi ACT. Once we know theta BC and theta AC, we can uh, find this out. So, accordingly, height H of the wedge can be obtained by determining the angles psi BCT prime and psi ACT prime which represent the dips of the lines of intersection as it is seen in a vertical plane at right angles to uh, the tunnel axis. So, take a look here that how we can determine this. So, you see that this is what is your psi ACT prime and this is psi BC T prime. So, uh, these can be determined. So, once these are known, we know this base line and if you just draw two lines making an angle respectively as psi AC T prime and psi BC T prime here, wherever these lines intersect that will represent the uh, apex of that wedge and its uh, distance as shown here in this figure, this will give you the height of the wedge. So, once you know the height of the wedge and you know uh, the uh, base dimension, you can always find out that what is going to be the volume of the wedge. So, now this angle uh, psi BCT prime, you can find out from this expression which is uh, tan of psi BC divided by sin of theta BC. Uh, this we saw with reference to first uh, uh, psi of ABT prime also. So, uh, other angles can be determined in the similar way. So, once we know this, we can complete the construction of this view and from there we can determine the height of the wedge. So, this is how uh, we can uh, analyze the side wall uh, failure uh, in an underground excavation using the stereographic projection method. So, uh, in the next class we will be learning about the elastic analysis of the uh, circular tunnels, there we will see that how the analysis of stresses and the analysis of displacements they are carried out. Thank you very much.